Oh yes, quiet gaming. Oh, I love it. So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof, it's Windows Pro time. Now, if you're new around here, come on. So join the Woo Train, ding a dong hit that bell. And if you want to be a champ, come on, give me a like. Now, you don't buy an iMac for gaming, but people are going to ask, how does it game? Because we all love games. And let's see how it compares to, you know, a custom PC at the same price point. This is the base model iMac. And how it compares to MacBook Pro and even like a Windows laptop and an Ultrabook with an eGPU. Let's have a look. I just wanted to see for myself. I really just wanted to see how it goes against a custom PC, sort of the same price. And yes, in that price, I did factor in like a display that costs, you know, a thousand dollars Australian, you know, 800 US or whatever it is. You do have to pay that much for a display of equal quality to the max and by the way if i was going to get a display it would definitely be this 43 inch phillips which is like 700 nits brightness just normal brightness 1000 nits peak brightness hdr and it has the color gamut you know just as wide as the imax so yeah it's like i've seen it for a thousand but it's a, I think it's like 1100 here in Australia at the moment. So if we have a quick look at the processors in this iMac, basically, you know, that 8500 is nearly as good as that 9600, other than the all-core versus 4.3 versus 3.9. That's the only real difference. Yes, that is ninth generation, that 9600, but... In reality, it's just the boosts in the clocks there. Not much between those. Like, seriously, in a gaming sense, not much. You know, if you're gaming at 3.9 versus 4.1, probably won't notice the difference. Yeah, all right, 3.9 versus 4.3, there may be a bit of a difference there. But if you want the best gaming experience, obviously the i9 is the way to go. Some higher clocks will be had. So I'm going to get onto the iMac gaming benchmarks just in a sec. But for my own purposes, I want to see how it went against my MacBook Pro and a custom PC. Now, the custom PC is the same price, you know, pretty much exact. I took out the expensive graphics card it had in it and then, then I put a Vega 64 and yeah, it works out sort of the same price. That's the way I made it. Now, it does have 16 gigs. If you're working at the same price as the iMac, it can have 16 gigs. And yes, I did factor in a thousand dollar display as I was talking about before. All in all, if you work out that display is super expensive on that iMac, I think it's not bad value at its base price. It's when you start adding stuff, it just gets out of control and crazy expensive. And yeah, you could get a PC much cheaper than this. Uh, yeah, I don't have to use a Vega 64. I could just pretty much any graphics card, even a 1660 will beat the AMD 570. And I could virtually save, you know, three, four hundred just on the GPU itself. And having a look at that MacBook Pro 15 inch. Oh my God, I do not want to be reminded I spent that much on a laptop. That is just out of control there. And the Aero 15, not too bad, the price there. And yes, and it's significantly cheaper than the MacBook Pro. And it's got a lot more power, you know, RTX 2070 Max-Q. And the XPS 13 is pretty expensive once you include the GPU and the graphics card. So anyway, let's get into some of the benchmarks, compare them, and then I'm going to get into the iMac benchmarks. So first one we look at is DSX Mankind Divided iMac 54 frames per second and the custom PC obviously you know it blows it away but I will say I do enjoy gaming on that iMac because it is silent very silent so that's good whereas that custom PC Vega 64 oh, yeah Vega 64 very definitely and then that thing uses like 300 watts just on its own that Vega 64 MacBook Pro can mix it up with the iMac I was very surprised there 51 frames per second, very respectable. And considering when you use the MacBook Pro gaming, when you light up that GPU, the clocks aren't very high. The iMac will maintain 3.9 gigahertz, whereas the MacBook Pro, you know, it's only in the 2000s. The clock speed really goes down, but it's still mixed it up there. And, and there's the Aero 15. Have a look at that. 72 FPS in a laptop, thin and light laptop, and the XPS with an eGPU. And very respectable there. GTA 5. This was a little bit weird. All right, the iMac gets some good frames per second there. Very enjoyable gameplay. Silent, of course. The custom PC, of course, is going to be faster. No problems there. The MacBook Pro, 84 frames per second. That's pretty good for a laptop. Something that's four pounds, thin and light. Yeah, it's like really good performance. And the Aero 15, 107 frames per second. It's interesting how close that is between the iMac and the Aero 15. 
And what was strange here was the eGPU, 73 frames per second. I don't know why, something to do with the eGPU bottleneck, but um, yeah, it's like well down compared to the other ones. Go into PUBG, and what leapt off the page here was that iMac and the MacBook Pro. Virtually the same. Wow. MacBook Pro, that Vega 20, man, that's pretty good. That's very surprising to me. Now, you can overclock the GPU in the iMac, and of course, this is running in Windows. And when you do overclock that GPU to 1200 megahertz, you will get an extra 10 frames per second in PUBG, and it was like an extra 12 frames per second in Witcher 3. So that overclock can make a huge difference in the iMac. So it is nearly up to a 20% performance increase with just that little tweak of the GPU. Hero 15 here, smashing it again, and the eGPU with the XPS 13 kicking goals as well. So of course, the custom PC smashed it. That's what you'd expect. The iMac is not a gaming machine. It's never meant to be. But one thing I think is a little disappointing for me is if you look at the Aero 15, it has a 230 watt power supply. And if you ripped out the motherboard of the Aero 15, you could fit easily two of them in the back of an iMac. There's so much space in the back of the iMac and yet they can only manage around 140 watts total package, maybe 150 watts with so much room and the Aero 15 is super thin and light and can easily use more than 180 watts. That's the disappointment there. The components in the iMac are capable of so much more. But that's how it is with all Apple products. I mean, even the MacBook Pro is thermally challenged there as well. You're not going to get the absolute max out of those parts. But for what they're designed for, video editing and that, they're super fast, they're quiet, they're silent. You won't have any problems with this. It doesn't have a T2 chip. So I'm happy with the iMac for gaming. It is good performance. Yes, if you go to the PC world, you're going to get better performance for gaming. But in video editing, you will see. I will have a shootout with these products in video editing. You will see. Yeah, the iMac claws all this back and it's only got 8 gigs of RAM. So what it's designed for, it does very well. But obviously, gaming, you know, PC, come on. You've got to get a PC if you're really into gaming. So anyway, let's get into the benchmarks. All these benchmarks for the iMac are at 1080p, high settings, Apex Legends, we'll get 81 frames per second, very playable. GTA 5, 100 frames per second at high settings. PUBG, 66 frames per second, or virtually 67 frames per second at high. Remember, you can get a 10 frame per second boost if you overclock there. Witcher 3, 47 frames per second. Overclock it, you'll get 60 frames per second. Battlefield 5, an even 60 frames per second. And Fortnite, 72 frames per second. And we've already said Deus Ex Mankind Divided, 54 frames per second. So yeah, silent gaming, good sound, excellent display. All right, it's not fast. It doesn't have the pixel response and all that. Yeah, it's not a gaming display, but the, but the games look awesome. It's not designed for games, but it games well. It's very competent and I like gaming on it. It's silent. So I love that. If you overclock it though, I would turn up the fans. So anyway, stay tuned for my content creation review compared to the MacBook Pro and some other PC computers. Catch you in the next one. Sally, ho.